in this video today, I'm going to talk to you about low back pain, the four most common causes, how to be able to identify them, understand what the problem is so you can be able to treat it. Cutting Edge Pain Relief, the channel that teaches you how to biohack your pain and get back to doing what you love. If we haven't met, I'm Dr. Orlando Landrum from Cutting Edge Pain Relief. Today, we're going to talk about four different causes. The number one cause being muscle sprain. Muscle sprain is probably the most common cause of having back pain. It traditionally will happen after having done some form of activity, but it doesn't always have to be the case. It can mimic a lot of other potential problems that can present, and it is frequently something that is self-limited. And what self-limited means that it is short in nature, that it doesn't necessarily need to be treated. However, that's not always the case. Traditional treatment for it has been exercise, activity. In the distant past, it used to be bed rest and potentially muscle relaxants, so things like Flexero or Scalaxin. However, as we've looked at more of a biomechanical model, the things that we've noticed is that we really got to get that muscle moving. So things like yoga, Pilates, different movement type exercises, tr treatment modalities that include things like dry needling, which are small needles like an acupuncture type needle that helps bring blood flow into the muscle, is hugely important in order to be able to improve muscle sprain. Number two, the second most common cause of back pain is the joint in the low back. If we're using scientific terms for it, it's called facet joint pain, or for being really fancy with it, something that's called zygopophyseal joint. So those joints are what allow us to be able to bend and twist and turn. They frequently can give problems with exacerbated and prolonged use. So if a person has been a laborer or they do a lot of bending and twisting and turning as an athlete or as a gardener, um, those type of professions and hobbies result in potential facet disease. Facet disease is traditionally worsened when the back is arch. So when your shoulders go back and when you put a lordosis or curve to the aspect of your lower back. It's typically improved with forward flexion and rest because of the joints being the predominant issue that is in play most of the time they are what will give problems that are localized to the low back with occasional radiation into the buttocks and down into the posterior thigh, but typically it doesn't go below the knee. It's sometimes worse with changes in barometric pressure, so changes like when a storm comes in, it can be worse with cold weather, and one of the most common ways to treat it is by using products like NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. So those are going to be things like ibuprofen, Aleve, elements of that nature. Historically, from a traditional treatment option from a pain standpoint, uh, interventionally has been treated with injections like facet joint injections or something that's called a radial frequency ablation, which targets the nerves to the joint. If you're interested in those type of treatments, take a look at our video that we have posted in regards to that. Other more novel treatment options include things like orthobiologics, so things like PRP or stem cells uh, as potential treatment, or turmeric as a potential utilization and treatment. Take a look at our two videos here, one that talks about orthobiologics and PRP specifically in the context for back pain for one of our patients that can attest to it, and the other that talks about turmeric within the context of being able to use for pain in general. The third most common cause of back pain is that of discogenic pain. So there's two different types when we really get into the aspect of the disc which exists in between the vertebral bodies. Traditional discogenic pain is disc problem that is present within the context of the disc. And traditionally, that pain is worsened when someone sits for a prolonged period of time. So truck drivers, taxi cab drivers, Uber drivers, people who travel on planes and are really in a, a static position, it'll have it'll present with pain that's present within the low back. 
The other aspect of a disc problem is that of a bulge or herniated disc, which presses against some areas of the nerve, but traditionally that will result in sciatic or radicular pain that goes down the leg or goes down the arm if it's present in the neck. However, a central bulge can result in axial pain, meaning pain that's localized just to the back with no radiation. Many times those bulges are limited in nature and will resolve on their own, meaning they go back in, that they don't continue to bulge, which results in improved pain. Discogenic pain is a little different. It traditionally doesn't improve uh, initially, and it can result in degenerative disease, degenerative disc disease, as well as changes that will change the stability of the spine. When we talk about disc treatments, there's a number of different thought processes, but traditionally, pain has resolved around either the aspect of epidural steroid injections or possibly surgery. More novel, newer ways are looking at as to why there was a change in the disc in the first place, what caused it to be able to have that degree of either bulge or sensitization of its nerves, and typical treatments that are more novel and interesting and can be able to provide a longer lasting result are gonna be things like stem cell therapy, platelet lysate type treatments. If those things appeal to you, take a look at our video over here or treatments that really kind of target the aspect of the disc and the spine as a whole. Number four, the fourth most common cause of pain is something that is called spinal stenosis. Spinal stenosis is a narrowing that's present within the aspect of the spinal canal. It typically results in pain that's worse when you stand and when you walk. Typically, it takes at least about five minutes before that pain starts. It can result in something that's called neurogenic claudication, which is in essence, the nerves feel squeezed and they give a sensation down the leg. But normally that improves when the patient sits or when the person sits. One of the classic textbook indications is something that's called shopping cart sign, where instead of the patient or the person being able to stand erect, they bend forward as if they had a shopping cart in front of them. Spinal stenosis can be caused by a whole host of different problems. If you have spinal stenosis or you believe you have spinal stenosis, please reach out to our clinic, which is Cutting Edge Pain Relief. You can be able to find it online at www.cuttingedgepainrelief.com. If you have interest in learning more about different treatments for spinal stenosis, like the mild procedure, which is minimally invasive lumbar decompression, which is a type of treatment that's percutaneous, meaning it uses a small incision, but it doesn't have regular open surgery that would require screws and bolts and rods and those type of things, but a small incision that allows for that area to have a cleaning out, kind of like a rotor rooter that gets you back to being able to do the things that you want to be able to do and walk like you'd like to be able to. So those are the four most common causes of pain. And to go back through it again, it's that aspect of the muscle sprain, the facet joint, the components of having a disc change or spinal stenosis. If you have interest in this video, really gave you insight into some problems that you have, please take a look at some of the other videos on our channel where we talk about degenerative disc disease and facet disease specifically that's present with the back, as well as some of the treatment options that are out there. If this channel provides you value and someone else to be able to help them get back to doing what they do, please subscribe so you can get other videos that can be able to help you learn more about how to be able to treat pain and get back to leading the life that you deserve.